we have been doing online worship for months now. And I'm sure many of you have been sitting in your living rooms with your family or, uh, and listening to the sermons and music. And just like church, sometimes children can get a little wiggly. Even some of you adults are a little wiggly. And I just want you to know that that's okay. That if children uh, are a tiny bit wiggly during service, even online service, it is okay. Children are always welcome. No matter where we are having service, no matter where we are hearing the scripture read or songs sung, that we are all welcome, uh, especially those of us who are wiggly, because no doubt I was definitely a distracted child when I was in church. So parents, it's okay. Take a deep breath and we can just hear the word proclaimed together. I want to read this morning from Genesis chapter 28. We have heard uh, that story acted out in some manner already during our online worship today. And so I want to read that story from you, or for you uh, from Genesis chapter 28 and it's verses 10 through 19a. Listen to this story. It's a wonderful story. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth the top of it reaching to the heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed because of you. I know that, know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This story is great because Jacob is between times. He is in this sort of in-between time in his uh, journey, as in his life journey. And, and what's happened before this is he has tricked his brother and his father and tricked them and got uh, Esau's birthright. His father, who was blind, uh, was going to give a blessing to the oldest son, which is Jacob's brother. And Jacob dressed up like him and and uh, tricked his father into getting the blessing. He basically stole the blessing from his family. So he is an outcast. He is running. He is heading north from uh, Beersheba, and he is running, and he is sort of a trickster. He's kind of someone who uh, has tricked his father, and now he is in between times and has no place where he can call home. And in that in-between, in the time between him tricking his father and having to run from home and him heading north to what will happen to him in Haran, he lays down and falls asleep. And during his sleep, he has a dream. And in that dream, there is a ladder or a stair step or some kind of bridge that is happening between heaven and and earth. And on that, there are these angels that keep descending and ascending, and they are messengers of God. I like this story because oftentimes we think of heaven as being so far away. We think of that divide between heaven and earth as being this final kind of divide. And yet, here in Jacob's story, 
uh, everything in heaven has to do with earth. And there is some kind of exchange going on between heaven and earth. One of the theologians that I read and, and that I particularly like when it comes to interpreting Genesis is he says, heaven has everything in this, in this story, heaven has everything to do with earth and earth has everything to do with heaven. As if there is not that divide and somehow God is in the world and the earth and heaven are exchanging what is happening. That's comforting to me that maybe heaven is not that far off and that we are not so divided from the works of God. As he sees the angels descending and ascending, the Lord stands beside him and promises him that he will always be with Jacob, that Jacob will not be alone as he runs from his home and heads to a foreign land. He will not be alone and that God will keep him. And this is the same promise that the Lord gave to Abraham and to Isaac and now gives to Jacob. As if some way that this promise that God has to always be with God's people goes from generation to generation to generation, and it's Jacob's turn to hear that promise. And sure enough, the Lord says, I will not leave you, and I will keep you, and I will keep your people and your children. And after that, after the Lord speaks to Jacob, he wakes up. And right out of his sleep in the text, it's like an exclamation point. He says, surely the Lord is in this place. And then he says this wonderful, wonderful little line. He says, I did not know it. I didn't know that God was there. It's almost like this exclamation that he, he did not realize that God was in that place. And he's surprised by it because he's between times. He's not at home. He is uncertain about his future, and yet God comes to give him hope. And he says, God was right here, and I didn't even know it. Years ago, I don't even remember what year, it was probably uh, a few years ago, when I started out in ministry, I took a youth team to Bolivia. And it was my first time going to South America, and we went into a small village of Takachia in Bolivia and we drove out there and we pull up in our, you know, Jeeps that could traverse the Andes mountains and all of these children come rushing out of an orphanage and just hug us and grab us. And the, uh, one of the pastors there in that little tiny village, when we all gathered around for the first time to introduce ourselves, the pastor put his hand on his heart and he said, seeing you is like feeling God in my heart. And in that moment, I realized that God had already been in Bolivia before I ever got there. I was not expecting to see anything. And all of a sudden, in that moment, I realized, oh man, just like Jacob, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not. That's the wonderful thing about this is that Jacob is surprised by it. And I wonder that if our Christian journey is not full of those moments and we are called to those moments, those moments when uh, we are not quite sure where we're at, where the world seems to be spinning out of control or our world seems to be spinning out of control and yet we are surrounded by God. I had a professor in college that said that we were waist deep. We were wading waist deep in the grace of God. We only needed to see it. God reveals to Jacob that God is there, that heaven has everything to do with earth and earth has everything to do with heaven and that God is in all things and God has not left Jacob even if Jacob finds himself an outcast thrown out from his family. God is still with him. This is the promise that goes from generation to generation. And Jacob didn't know it, but in that moment, he gets to see it. And I wonder if part of our journey as Christians, what we are supposed to do or what we are called and blessed with the opportunity to do is to see God, is to remind the world that heaven has everything to do with earth and that God will not leave us, but will always 
keep us. It's to recognize where God is and say, surely God is here. And I didn't even know it. And we are surprised by where God is in the world. I have already been surprised here at First Church about where I am seeing God, even as we do all of this online, and even as we are sort of between times and in a difficult spot. And yet, if we can, with Jacob, begin to see that God is always surrounding us, always with us in the midst of everything, and we can wake up and our eyes, the scales like Paul can be, fall off of our eyes and we can begin to see God and say, surely God is here. And I did not know it. I did not know it. I challenge you to look for God. Look for the messengers of God and look for that ascending and descending. Look for places on earth that have everything to do with heaven. That actually God is working and loving and caring for others. And when we see it, we can say, I did not know it, but I see it now. And blessed is this place. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.